Good morning, grandkids. Um, today I'm going to talk about horror games and writing and maybe a move. Probably a move. And I got a piece of mail. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about horror games. I have been trying so hard to find a good horror game. And the ones that I'm waiting for, which really looked good to me in their trailers, I thought sure would be out in time to record something really good for Halloween. But they haven't come out. I don't understand why they wouldn't have something like that for Halloween time. So, but the ones uh, I have found, maybe one or two, and I'm going to make a few videos on the one and post it for Halloween Day. Uh, I'll post the first one by 7.30 a.m. like I try to get all my games posted. And then my, I might post another one or two within the hours of the morning after that but really you should wait until night time to watch them like with the lights out and, or maybe after you go to bed and on your laptop or something that's what I would do if I was going to watch uh, Halloween movies but you can watch them when you want it's, it will be there for you to watch but the thing about horror games that I don't understand, have any of you seen the trailer for Scorn? It's almost like walking through a human's body. I mean, it is gross. And things you see in there and that come at you that you have to keep killing, that is horror to me. But the games that come out, and I was hoping it would be out for Halloween, but so far it's not. But um, the games that they call horror games, the only thing they are is walking down hallways and into rooms and out of rooms and down more hallways. And it's always so convoluted that no house would be built like that. So that part's ridiculous to me. In every game, there's a doll or a teddy bear or a music box playing or a radio going or a TV with static on it. I don't know what any of these things have to do with horror. And they don't look scary to me and they don't do anything. So I don't understand the reason. Uh, you walk down these halls once in a while when you're walking through the halls and rooms. Something might give you a jump scare. It's just psh, there and then it's gone. Psh. And so what was the point in it? What did it have to do with anything? I don't know. And uh, other than that, you're just always trying to find some keys to open some doors that why they're all locked is beyond me. And there is no horror to it. So I don't, it, it just boggles my mind what developers consider horror. I can think of lots of ways that I would love to play a horror game, but I don't know how to make games. So I guess I'll never get to play one. And uh, it's, it's like, a set formula and every developer uses the same formula and doesn't change much of anything so they're all alike and and there's no horror to them to me and so I tried to find one that that I could try to make you feel scared in so we'll see what I can do with it um, Talk, talking about horror, do you, do you guys remember back in some of the earlier 
videos after I started using a camera and uh, this side I had I had something right there on the upper edge of my lip up on the skin it it looked like a wart to me and I was and I would be able to pick it off and then it'd bleed a little bit and then and then it would grow back Finally, one day, I got so tired of it being there, I did something that I know I shouldn't do. And uh, when my son hears this, he'll probably send me an email and said, then say, Mom, why did you do that? You know better than do something like that. <laughs> but I did it anyway, and it's gone. But what I did was, you could, you could hook your edge of your fingernail underneath the edges of it, and I got so sick and tired of it being there, so I got my nail clipper. <laughs> and I stretched out stre <coughs> stretched out the skin. <coughs> Excuse me. So this would fit underneath the edge on each side. And I could clip it without cutting a big hole in my whole lip. And I just went clip, and that thing bled, but it came off. I went and put ice on it and rinsed it in cold water and kept dabbing it and drying it. Finally, it quit bleeding, and so I put a big gob of Neosporin on there. That thing healed up, didn't leave a scar, and it's never come back. <laughs> so I did something that was horror. I was scared to do it, but I was just tired of that being there. Don't ever do anything like that, kids, because it wasn't very sanitary. It wasn't very smart. Uh, it could have been something bad. And this thing could have been, and probably was, dirty. So don't do that. Everything that Grandma does isn't right. Lots of things Grandma does isn't right. And the other thing I want to talk about was was writing stories. I write a lot of uh, bits of stories. I have them stored in my computer. I'll usually write a scene that I can envision in a story. And my, but I, I never, I'm a frustrated writer. That's why I play Skyrim the way I do in role play. I have to tell stories. And it's quicker to tell a story in a video game like that, take a few videos to tell a story, than it is to write down a story and, and change things and move this line around down here and make notes. Well, I should put something else in here. I just am not dedicated enough to do that. So that's why I'm a frustrated writer. I like to write bits and pieces, a scene here and there, and figure out in my head the whole idea of the book, and then just write different scenes out of it. And uh, in playing games, I've always made stories out of them, even way back in the 90s when I, when I started playing Civilization II. I made up stories in my head with that, and I used to tell my son, about that and he'd say well mom why don't you write those stories down and one day I I started to try to do that but my memory's bad and I would play for a little while and and then I would turn to my notebook and write and write and write and then I'd play for a while and then I'd write and I'd write and by the end of the time I was through tired of playing I would have to go through all of that and then write it into a story form. And that got so tiring and boring and it interrupted my game too much. But that was the only way I could do it. Because if I waited until I was all through with the game, I would forget half of what I'd done, wouldn't know what to write. So I was just making the story in my head. So that's how my story writing went and that's how it has developed in games. And, uh, but I'll tell you, I have had a dream that I have had all through years and years, many years, 20 years at least, maybe more. 
and out and in its light it's a whole complete city or little town Berg maybe and there's certain sections of it like there's a section down here and up a hill there's a section of neighborhood over here and going this way and up a hill is a section of neighborhood over here and down that way and all the way out to an airport and way down here and over to a beach area off the beach a little crafty shopping place and in every one of these areas I, I dream something in one of those areas and it's and it's like a whole story sometime in a future dream I might come back to that same area and be involved in that same story and yet in between I can dream and be in one of these other sections of the town and be dreaming some other totally unrelated story. Isn't that weird? I could actually I could actually draw you a map of where all my dreams are located in that area. It's it's the strangest thing. I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody or not. There's supposedly nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Every time somebody thinks they've dreamed up something unique, somebody else has thought of it too. But I wonder if anybody has dreamed dreams like that through years that take place in different sections of a particular community. And all of these places I have never seen in my life. They aren't from anything in my life. It's just really weird. I just thought I'd share that with you because it's so strange. <laughs> Let's see, what else did I want to tell you about? Um, I'll show, I went to the post office yesterday and there was this envelope. And it's from Cyprus. Cyprus is part of Italy, isn't it? Or Greece. Anyway, it's a little island out in the Mediterranean. And it's, and it's from one of my subscribers and uh, uh, Christina and or <coughs> it's from Helen and her daughter Christina and she sent me in this cute little envelope that has a map on it she sent me this pretty card which is absolutely represents why I've always wanted to visit Italy because this just looks like Italy to me I want to walk up and down some of them little narrow streets and see all them flower baskets that they have out over their balcony and these stone houses that they live in and it's, it just is such a totally different community than what you would find here in America. I just want to go there so bad. Anyway, she said, Dear Shirley, just a few bits to let you know that here on this little island in Europe, there are a couple of people watching and enjoying your videos. Thank you for all your hard work. We feel like we know you, even though you are so far away. Your personality shines through as you play the Dragonborn. So keep up the hard work, but always enjoy it too. Wishing you the very best. All our love, Helen and Christina. And I thought that was so sweet. And that is so pretty. You couldn't have picked out a better card for me to love. And also she sent me uh, another little note and their picture, but she asked me not to show that. <laughs> and I got a kick out of this because it was upside down in the package when I pulled it out. So this is what it looks like upside down. And I thought, what in the world is that? It just looks like a female human form. <laughs> what is that for? But then on the other side, it's a spoon rest for small spoons and large spoons. And it's got kitty cats all over it. And it says cats of Cyprus on it. So, 
I really, that's going right in there on my kitchen counter because I really need that. I'm always laying my stirring spoons down on the counter and making a mess and having to keep it cleaned up. So that's going on my kitchen counter. Thank you. And she sent me this beautiful picture print. Look at this, it's a dragon. Isn't he great? And you can, when you turn it, it just, it just shimmers and glows. And he's so pretty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a frame for him. Thank you. But this one, I'm gonna get a frame for this one because any drawings that's sent to me, I keep, and I want to make me a. What would it be called? A memory wall? And I do have some drawings sent to me, like attached to an email. And they're in my computer. I'll have to print them out on a CD someday and take them to the library and get them printed off. I haven't even ever gotten to show them. I've shown the others. But here's what she drew. I don't know if... I don't know if Helen drew it or if Christina drew it, but there's a Khajiit. Isn't he cute? I like his his uh, warrior paint or whatever on his face. Thank you very much, and that's very good. So that will go on a frame. And she sent me like a couch pillow cover or a chair pillow cover. It's an opening to put the pillow in. And it's a cypress map with pictures of things that's on cypress and the names of the buildings. I didn't know cypress was the island of Venus. Maybe that's why that spoon holder looked like a female figure to me. And maybe it was supposed to. And then she sent me this uh, souvenir of Cypress. And this is an apron. It ties around the neck and ties around the waist. And it says souvenir of Cypress. And it's got the map on it. In different uh, places and stuff on it. And I don't use an apron, but I wondered if you would mind if if I cut this whole section out and I cut this section out and incorporated them into a quilt top because I have other uh, map pieces of fabric and it could be a quilt of just various maps of different places. If you wouldn't mind if I cut it like that, I would like to do that. So that was the mail that I got, all of that was from Helen and Christine. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it a lot. I love to get mail. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about? I always get stuck. I think, I think about things and I make notes and then I don't always make all the notes I want to make. I forget. Oh, I did want to tell you that as much as I love Ohio, it is so beautiful. And as much as I care about the friends that I've made here in Rocky Mount, my health had, I had been feeling so bad for so long that I really kind of got worried about the direction that my health was going in. And so I talked to my son in Ohio, where I had lived before I moved here to Virginia 
and told him my concerns and that I would really like to move back to be around my sons back there. I have another son that's right across in Indiana. And they have each come to visit me and uh, the one in Indiana even walked through my apartment uh, figuring out what size U-Haul it would take to load everything into. But anyway, they, they, they've agreed for me, they'd like for me to move back too. And uh, my son in Indiana kept going on about uh, move back soon because I want you closer so I can see you. And so I'm going to do that. I've, uh, I'm applying to uh, an apartment near my son in Ohio and um, the apartment is all on one the buildings are all on one floor and it's around a center courtyard and the back of each apartment faces the courtyard and you each one have a slab patio out back which I would be, really be thrilled to have because here I haven't been able to raise any plants or anything and I used to raise such beautiful plants and uh, with that I would be able to have potted plants out again so that makes me happy I'd be putting pictures of that on Twitter I like to put pictures on Twitter I enjoy being on Twitter and all of you comment to me a lot on Twitter so the waiting list there is long, especially since I don't live there somewhere in that county. Uh, when an apartment would come available, it would go to someone in that county first. But I did let them know that I had lived uh, back there before and that I wanted to move back near my son. And uh, so maybe they will consider me. But the waiting list is like anywhere from six months to a year or longer. So we shall see how that goes. <coughs> I have been cleaning house and dusting and vacuuming and stuff. And I've got so much dust stirred up that it's in my lungs, I guess. So forgive my coughing. So I guess that's all I have today. Uh, I'm expecting a, another interviewer to come next week from New York, and it's it's for a it's from ABC, but it's for their page on the internet, and uh, I'll let you more let you know more about that later on. So, I guess that's all that I have. I just sort of wanted to bring you up today. I've been feeling very good. My doctors found out, I went to a cardiologist and he said that my heart is doing good and that all the symptoms I had been having is caused by my thyroid acting up again so they changed my medication and I have been feeling so much better. So that's the good news on that situation. So I guess that's it. I'm gonna get busy this afternoon and make another video or two and then I got get started on the Halloween video. So I will talk to you later. All of you be good, be sweet to one another you're all so good on my on my YouTube page. I just couldn't ask for better subscribers and viewers. And and I appreciate it. And I know that each of you appreciate it because everyone has become so much more respectful of one another, which that makes me the most proud. When I first started my YouTube uh, recording, People could be so nasty to each other and hateful and disrespectful for no reason. I mean, 
correcting somebody's English and and making any when I get people from all over the world and that would make them feel bad that's not right so I didn't tolerate that very long and now everyone on my channel is so sweet I think I have I think I have the best subscribers of any channel on YouTube <laughs> that's how I feel about all of you I care about you I love you I appreciate it when you send me cards or any little gift or anything and and I appreciate it your comments uh, we've gone over in my last video I think last video or two back uh, about some negative things but so you won't dwell on that anymore so you you leave me very nice comments I, it's, it's not that I want uh, someone saying, oh, that was so good and all that, because I know they aren't that good. And people, some of you will say, you're the best YouTuber there is. And I know I'm not. But when you just acknowledge that you watched the video and enjoyed it, or say good morning, and that makes me happy, because that lets me know that you're there. Um, if you was ever to instant message me on uh, Twitter or something and send me a picture of yourselves, I really, really like that when I get a picture. And uh, when you tell me not to show a picture, I don't. So that's all I have to say now for sure and certain. <laughs> so I will talk to you all later and bye-bye.